Okay, guys, so <clears throat> just while we're waiting for the last of our people to arrive, maybe we can do a quick little review of what we did last week. I'm going to shut down these front lights here so we can see the screen a little better. I don't know about you guys, but I thought the stuff we did last week was pretty fun. So we essentially um, downloaded some motion capture information. We applied that to some character models. And then we saw how to use something called the animation controller, which basically allows us to add interactivity uh, to our animations. And what we came up with was basically a zombie who has the ability to attack and he's got a little idle loop that we can use while he's just standing around, which zombies do tend to do a lot of. We also saw a second way of doing animation, which is our keyframe animation. So in a second, I'm going to take a look at what we did last week. And we'll start planning out how we're going to incorporate this into our main game. And we should have something pretty awesome working today. Oh, <laughs> run into your own bullets. All right, let's take a quick look at um, <clears throat> this little file from last week. Now, if I run this, we can see that we have our zombie animating very nicely and is kind of his little twitchy kind of idle pose here. Then um, if I hit the K key, he does like a smash attack. And then we've got a second little example here of our spinny box, which is just kind of our example of uh, keyframe animation. Keyframe animation you would, you would use for anything like an opening door or maybe dropping a trap or dropping an ax or something like that, you know? <clears throat> So how did we accomplish this? Well, the main two things that we had to know how to do was first off, we learned how to grab animations uh, from Mixamo. And when we take a look inside those animations, you saw that they are actually keyframe animations, right? Yeah. But they're keyframe animations where keyframes have been applied to every single joint inside of the motion capture library. And so they're pretty massive. If you if you were to try and remake those like by hand, you would have to be a pretty skilled animator and it would take quite a long time. We use the Mixamo library because they've basically added uh they've basically put motion capture suits on actors, had them act these things out just like um what's his name? Uh Sirtis. Anthony Sirtis, I think is his name. Uh Gollum from Lord of the Rings, right? So if you had a nice model of Gollum and you had that motion capture that he recorded for the movie, you could basically recreate Gollum inside yeah, Unity. Yeah. Exactly. Or like Hulk, yeah, right? Hulk is... Or um, Guardians of the Galaxy, Groot oh, yeah. is uh, Vin Diesel, you know? They're yeah, motion yeah. capturing Vin Diesel. So. Exactly. Yeah, like we can't afford Vin Diesel for this production, but we can download stuff from Mixamo, so that's pretty good. So I put together a little demo of uh, taking this same idea and bringing it into the game mechanic, and I can show you that. So let me jump over to that. <clears throat> so this will look familiar, right? I've got my player character, but where's my green box? Green box is gone. Or is it? If I... He's now a zombie, exactly. If I click on the zombie, see how he's still got a collider no. around him here? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Now, this is where I was mentioning that if you work with the standard cube, it's going to help you out here. Because the standard cube is exactly three, uh, one meter squared, yeah. right? So if you look at your standard cube, and you realize one meter comes up to about here on my zombie, that he's about 1.8 meters, which is like an average human height. So when you get to, yeah, yeah, how tall are you? 
Yeah. What? That's like tall. Zombies are like. You mean 1.84? Yes. Okay. 184 centimeters. Uh, gotcha. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah. Which is like about. Well, he's a tall zombie. If he's just slouched like this, he's Well, he's. Well. It's hard to say for sure. He's like. <laughs> he's less than two meters for sure. Alright, he's fine. And he is a little bit crouched over. Yeah. So. He's roughly the right size. He's. he's we could we could play around with his height. We could have different size zombies, but he's roughly the right size. Oh, we can, we can have baby zombies if that's you know how you want to add to the terror of your game. We are coming up on Halloween, right? If we get this done by Halloween, that's going to be awesome. Very doable. So check this out. I'm going to go ahead and hit the play on here. And see what happens? He's got this nice walking forward. He's getting close. He goes into his attack sequence and he kills us. And he's smart enough to know that once he's killed us, he goes back to his idle animation. Not just him, I can still duplicate him. So here, let's uh, make a couple more zombies here. Duplicate. And uh, I must apologize in advance, guys. My uh, my voice is a little bit whack today. Get back here. Come on. There we go. Um, I'm struggling with a cold again. It's always a danger when you teach little kids. <laughs> so here's a few. And... They'll attack on mass now. Yep. Here comes the horde. I mean, we probably want to stagger these animations a bit, but see how they get close enough, they all start attacking. And they're all smart enough to go back to their idle animation after I'm dead, right? So how do we add that Exactly, exactly. So this is what we're gonna do today. So I've got our little blank example here. So let me run it one time just to make sure that I've got everything I need. So I can shoot at him and kill him. That's all good. My bullets disappear after a while. I can try and evade him. I just realized that whenever you try to evade him, you can't turn around quick enough. So if you ever try to go around him, you lose. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I feel like it's very realistic, though. You know what I mean? We could. We <laughs> could. We could speed that up. Yeah. We can. Uh, we could add a multiplier to the rotate. But my main thing I want to get happening is that I want to uh, get some sweet animations in there and get those working while we still remember how to do it. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go to Mixamo. I'm going to get some sweet new animations. Because uh, I don't know that I want to use that cop that I've got in my examples here. Let me go to my characters, find another sweet zombie here. Um, there's this guy. He's also a cop, but he's like messed up slightly differently. Eh, maybe I don't want a cop though. Let's see what else we got here. Actually, I did kind of like this guy. He's just called Zombie. I found, a, I found a knight with a sword. Knight with a sword is good. Because then you've got a weapon already, yeah, which is... Like these guys just kind of attack with claws and chewing and stuff. So, Okay. Um, so now let's think about what we need this guy to do. Definitely, we pretty much always need an idle loop of some kind where they're just like standing. Uh, I want maybe one or two different types of attacks, right? Like, yeah, because like, if it's only one, that's going to look a little boring after a while, right? 
Maybe I want like the smash attack and then I want a slash attack as well, right? Some, some, some variety in there. And then I also need them to walk, right? Now the, I could do a walk and I could do a run, but I'm probably just gonna start off with a walk just for simplicity. So let's see what we got here. Let's, uh, let's get the idle loop first of all. Now, if you want to use what you got last week, that's totally doable as well, if you're happy with that. I know they've got some zombie idols in here. <clears throat> Let's see. So, yeah, so there's this one where he's just kind of like his hands are twitching a little bit. That's pretty good. So let me do that one, see how it looks. Yeah, you know what? That's not bad. I like that. So I'm going to download this. That's okay. Keep looking. <laughs> well, apologies to Owen if he's watching this video. I am going to cough or sneeze regularly. <laughs> and it probably sounds brutal in the microphone, but what can you do? Okay, let me download this guy. So I want the uh, FBX for Unity. I'm going to get that started downloading. And then I'm going to grab a couple more while I'm here. So I want to walk and maybe one or two attacks. <laughs> All right, so let me grab this one. I'm just gonna pull it onto my desktop and put it in a folder. No worries, we're in no rush. Okay. Okay, uh, let's see, so what about a nice walk animation? Let me search what out. Now you don't have to just use the zombie ones, like any animation in here can be applied to any character. But the zombie ones do look pretty good. So this one, you kind of drag in his gimp leg here. You found a good idol? Now, one, one danger I want to point out for you guys. When you get the walk animation, you see how he's moving out of frame there? We don't want that. So you're going to click on in place right here. And you'll see like, he stays in place and he's, he sort of looks like he's sliding, but we need that because we're going to move him forward with code, right? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> you might be able to do a, a few little adjustments in the sliders to kind of make that a little better. <laughs> so let me download this one. I think it's pretty good. Once I've got that, I'm going to look for an attack. The attacks are usually always in place, but sometimes there might be some kind of a charging attack, and you'll need to put those in place as well. <clears throat> All right, this is getting good. Okay, that one's downloaded. Let me grab that. So I'll be walking. And then let me find some kind of good attack.
Let's see. I did like this one, the smash attack. I don't know if that makes sense for a zombie, because their goal is to chew on you. I don't know that they'd really do this, but it just looks cool, so I'm going to grab it. Now this will get me started. Give that a second to download. <laughs> download in. There's good animations for the night, huh? Eh? And they're adding more all the time. This barbarian would be pretty cool to do something with. Okay, looks like that one's downloaded. So I'm going to grab uh, that one as well. And I'm just going to fix up these names real quick. Just get rid of these little numbers on here. Fair enough. All right, there we go. Okay, so I got three FBX files here. So the FBX file includes the textures, the materials, the keyframes, everything is all baked in. So now I can jump back into Unity we can start bringing them in. So I'm going to click on my project folder here. <coughs> sure, yeah. No problem. Yep. So just thinking ahead, um, I'm going to make a folder to put these in and maybe call it animations or sometimes I will call it models because the models are included. Okay, so I'm going to make a new folder here. So I'm going to right click on the assets folder and go create folder. Uh, I'm going to call it models. Like FBXs are a little tricky because they include everything, but the big thing is the models, right? So. Wait, I already have a models folder. Oh, do you? Perfect. Okay, so now I'm going to grab those FBX files. So let me start with the uh, zombie idol here. So I'm going to drag that into the folder. That's going to come into Unity. Now, this is where we hit that bug we've talked about, where his textures are not added to him, right? So the way to fix that, the best way I know of, it always has worked for me, is to uh, click on him. And then over here in the inspector, um, the last tab here says materials. And if I click on that, I can go extract textures, that button right there. And I'll make a textures folder inside of the assets folder. So I'll call it textures and select that folder. And it's going to go in the FBX and start copying the texture out of it. And somehow when it does that, Unity suddenly recognizes the textures and it gets applied. It also gives you this little um, prompt here where it says it can fix the problem. So I usually click on the fix now. And now you can see in the little box here, he's got his textures applied now. He should look okay. 
Now, you get a bunch of things when you uh, do this download from Mixamo. If you want to see what you get, you click on this little arrow right up on the side here. And then inside, you can see like these are all the things. So you've got the materials. Um, and most notably here, this one that looks like a play button. That's our animation. So what we're going to do is take that animation and we're going to drag and drop it onto our little green square zombie here, right? The idle one? Yeah. So I'm going to take this idle animation. I'm going to drag it right up here and drop it right on my zombie. Boom. And what happens is it will become a child. Or sorry, sorry, not... Ah, sorry, guys. Not the animation. I'm getting ahead of myself. I want to grab the entire... Here, let me undo that. There we go. Wait, what you mean you have to Hold on. It's okay. Um, it's not a problem. But what, what, you, what I actually need to do is I have to grab the entire model here. Yeah, and drag that and drop it on. Not just the animation. There we go. And then once I do that, hey, he appears inside of my green square, right? Now, if I spin my view around a little bit, you can see he's a, kind of like a little bit halfway up in the air. So I'm going to drag him down. I'm going to get his feet at the bottom of the green square. And you can see he's like a little bit short of two meters. Now, this is really important, guys. This part's really important. You need him to be facing forward. And we know that in Unity, forward is the blue arrow, right? So he should be facing the direction of the blue arrow. Yes, perfect, perfect. Usually they do come in that way, but sometimes they don't. You gotta turn, spin them around a little bit. We're making video games. Yeah, awesome. Zombie attack here, yeah. <laughs> Now, if you run it right now, he will actually move towards your player character. Like, it's well, actually functional right he's now. Though, is he? He's not animating yet, well, but even if it wasn't just but you can see like he is basically moving at the speed that I want. So that's pretty good. So then, um, yeah, to your point. We want to animate them. And for that, we need something called an animation controller. So here's how we're going to make one. In my models folder here, I'm going to right click inside of the folder. I'm going to go create. And I'm going to look for animation controller. See this one right here, guys? Uh, it's a way, uh, like if there's already a controller, you can basically use that to say, in these circumstances, I don't want you using that controller, I want you to use this other one. They're for like very complex animations. Yeah, it's kind of like, you know, when dad says do this, but then mom sometimes <laughs> says, no, do this. She's the overriding the controller. So let's make a... <coughs> and a animation controller. Now when you create it, it wants a name. So I'm going to call this my zombie controller. There we go. Oh, yeah. <coughs> oh, uh, press the F key. Okay. Yeah. Oh, it's very easy for that to happen. Now, now what you have to do is you got to click on your zombie animation right here. And then in the inspector, you see how you've got a slot for controller? So you're going to drag that controller you just made and drop it right into that slot. Boom. So now zombie controller 
is the controller from my zombie animations. Whew. I'm gonna keep drinking water. It's the only way I'm not gonna go coughing away. I do. I planned ahead because they're having an event. I was like, I better stock up. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Now, once you've done that, if you double click that controller, it'll open up and you can now preview it, right? Yeah. So, right now it's completely blank. We want to give it at least one state, which will be that idle animation right now. So to do that, this is what I was trying to do earlier. If you expand your zombie here, you can grab the little play button, which is the animation, drag it into the controller, and you see it's smart enough that it will automatically create the first transition from the entry point into the idle. And this should look somewhat familiar from last week. But we're not quite done yet, because right now what'll happen if I run it, he'll do his idle animation one time, but then he'll stop. And I want him to like continue doing that animation as long as he's standing around. So to do that, you're gonna click on the animation right down here. So click on the little play button finger. Then when you see zombie idle up here, you gotta click on this edit button. It's a little hard to see. It's a little tricky because there's a box here called loop pose or loop time. And you would think that you gotta click on that to make it loop, right? But it, it won't actually let you do it there. So you gotta click on the edit button. So you're, you're gonna click on the uh, little play button thing here, the animation, which you get to by expanding this one here, yep. So you click on it, when you see it in the inspector, there's a little edit button. So if you click on the edit button, in here you get a bunch of options, and the one that you want is the one to uh, loop it. So right down here, about part way down, you see loop time. I don't see the edit button. Oh. Um, I can't, I just don't know where it is. Let's see. Where's the edit? So click on uh, click on the oh. idle, and then oh, I, I already put it right in. there. <laughs> That's okay. You can still edit it. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Uh, there you go. And then there should be a loop time option part way down. Ah, that one right there. Yeah. Check that one. There you go. So that basically just tells it to uh, keep playing this animation. So I'm going to check that. I'm going to hit apply. <clears throat> there we go. So let me give this a run just so I can see if it's working. I believe it is working. My angle is a little weird, so maybe I can change that. Um, Does it work now? I think so. Let me, uh, let me switch this back. So at this point, I probably don't want to see the green box anymore, right? Do you guys know how I can make that green box invisible? Yes, exactly. We'll disable the mesh renderer on the green box. So it's still in there, but we just turn it off. There we go. Yeah. There we go. So I'm clicking on my zombie and then unchecking the mesh renderer. We don't really need it anymore, but we still keep that around because we still need the collider, right? <coughs> and we need the rigid body. Okay, so let me run this again, but I'm just gonna change my view here so I can see it a little better. So I'm gonna click on my camera and then I'm going to go game object, uh, align with view. It's a quick little way of like copying the perspective. Yep. 
There's an Idol and a Mix and Mousy. I think I put in the Idol one, but the Mix and Mousy I think was a cracked one. Oh. Okay. Um, yeah, you can delete them. Yeah, and then drag the other one in. Yep. Anything that happens in the animation controller can be edited. Oh, you were in play mode, right? Ah, uh, you might have to do it again. All right. Let me give this a little run and watch carefully and just see if his animation's happening. Yeah, it's subtle because he doesn't do a lot when he's idle, but it's working. All right. Not bad, not bad. So now we got to think about the different states that this zombie needs to have. He's got an idle, but he needs his walking state and he needs his attacking state, right? Are you sure? Sometimes it's hard to tell because it can be pretty subtle. And this one is the one because I looked at it. Like, I, I played it. Yeah, what's it look like? That. Oh, well, this idle animation doesn't do much. Yeah, it's really subtle. Yeah, it's really subtle, so. Probably hard to notice. But once you get his walking working, okay. you'll see it for sure. Oh, yeah, it is working. Yeah. It's just very subtle. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to need two more animations in here, right? So why don't I just go grab those FBXs and drag them right in here. So I got my attack and I got my zombie walking. I'm going to take both of these and drag them in. There we go. That's importing. Hey, look, this time the textures got applied. Ha! I don't have to do like the little extract the textures trick. Nice. Yeah, that's right. Then, then what you do is, uh, let's say I want to include the, uh, which one is this? Let's say I want to include the zombie walking. I open that one up. I grab the walking animation. I made a mistake. Okay. I drag it into the animation controller. Uh oh. <laughs> oh, okay, so you better download it again. Yeah. You're right, that's a bad one. <laughs> What's up? Oh. Um, so click on the guy down here, then, uh, whoa, why is this guy looking so weird? I, hmm, that's strange. Uh, click on the other one for a second. See, this is what I expect to see. I feel like you maybe didn't download FBX for Unity. Yeah? Oh, that's what's up. Wait, this is strictly a T-pose, so it doesn't include an animation. Yeah. Oh, is that what you wanted? No, I mean, like, it looks like his uh, mesh is just, it's like when I had him like this, and just went all blue, but I guess that's just because I had selected. So I think we figured it out. Hmm. Okay. So how do I get it into the animator? I was trying to figure out the download it was being. Hmm. Yeah, so once you've got your animator, yeah. Uh, it's going to need, so a couple things first, okay. so going to click on your um, uh, prisoner B here, yeah. <laughs> and you're going to drag, so uh, let's see, so right click here, and go create, um, animation controller, yeah, 
give it a name like prisoner controller or something like that. I like the idea of zombie prisoners. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. And then you're going to click on your uh, prisoner B stirp and then drag that controller right onto the controller slot. There you go. And now, if you double click your controller, you can start adding states to it. So, um, if you've got an idle animation, Should have picked up some cough drops. Perfect. And then it defaults to it. So what you probably want to do is have it loop. So uh, to do to do. So go to in your project. Go to your idle, whichever one that is. Expand it. Click on the play button. There we go. And then you're gonna click edit. And then you should have a loop time option. Yeah. And hit the, uh, keep scrolling down, hit the apply. So that'll take a second. And then, yeah. And then if you run it, you should see a looping idle animation. Give it a second. The first time takes a little while with these. There we go. I think it's working. Looks like it. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, cool. That's working pretty good. All right. <laughs> so we've got a looping idle animation. And then what I've done is I've expanded my walking animation. <coughs> and I've dragged my walking right up here. Now I probably want to set my uh, walking to loop as well. So I'm going to click on the walking animation, the little play button. Just like before, I'm going to click on edit and then go to my loop, loop time and apply it. Yeah, it's very, very similar. Okay, guys. So now we got to think about the transition here, right? Because what I need for to happen is that when the zombie starts advancing, he's going to go from his idle state to his walking state. That calls for a transition, right? So we're going to right click on the idle state Say so make a transition and draw it out to the walking state. Now if he can go from idle to walking, he can he might also be able to go from walking back to idle, right? But it depends what you're doing with your game. I I originally did it that way, but then I realized like that never happens for me. Because once they start going after the player, they never really go back to idle until they've killed them. So I don't really need to transition them back. <laughs> All right. Now this gives us what we need, but we need to add some conditions to this. So right up here, you see we've got this little tab called parameters. I'm going to click the little plus sign on there and I'm going to add a boolean. This boolean is going to be like, is he walking or is he not walking? True or false? Yes or no? So I'm going to call this new boolean walking. Okay. <coughs> so it's two steps. Because you have to add the condition, or add the parameter, and then you have to add a condition on the transition. So, I'm going to click on the little arrow that's on the transition here, 
right here. And the transition will turn blue. And then over in the inspector here, you see this area called conditions? You're going to hit the plus sign. And it's smart enough to supply into it walking true. Now what this means is that he's not going to go to the walking animation until the walking variable is set to true. We're going to do that in code. Right here, under conditions, if you hit the little plus sign. <coughs> yeah, yeah, check it out. Under conditions there. So first you got to click on the little transition yeah. arrow here, right here. Yeah. It'll turn blue yeah. and then you hit the plus sign on conditions. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> so this is getting pretty good. It, it actually won't be too difficult for us to get this animation up and running and then we can add on as many as we want. I think I might add a death animation as well because yeah, I'm, I'm missing that. So, <clears throat> so have you guys both added that that condition? Okay, so then we got to go into the code. So I'm going to click on my zombie, and I've got a enemy behavior script. You should have something like that too. Or it might be enemy movement or whatever you called it. <clears throat> so I'm going to click on the edit button. Uh, nope. Um, do you have a script on there already? Maybe called enemy behavior? Or it might be enemy movement? So click on zombie, yep, right there, uh, yeah, so click on the edit for that. <clears throat> and we're going to modify this code to set that walking variable to true or false, if, depending on if he's moving ahead. So edit script. Okay, so we actually did quite a little, quite a lot with <laughs> relatively little code here. So we need one more thing in here. We're going to make a private of type animator. Oh, Visual Studio is giving you a hard time, right? So, yes, what do I have to have now? Well, can I so I would suggest download Visual Studio Code. Is this like the same thing? Uh, Visual Studio Code, yeah, that's is that the one. better? It's way better, way better. And Visual Studio? Oh, yeah. Then so, and then um, download for Windows, yeah. Why, why is there even a Visual Studio? Well, this one's newer. It's only like made in the last year or so. Oh, and the other one goes back years. Like they've had it for like 10 years or more. Yeah, so about a year. It's been around, right? Or maybe a little more than a year. But uh, yeah, download that. Yep. Yep. Pad. Oh, it's, no, I'm not creating a desktop icon. <coughs> there you go. Downloading. That was pretty quick. All right. Okay, so it's installed. Then you just got to add it to your preferences in Unity. So uh, I'll show you how I usually do it. Uh, well, first we got to find out where it installed to, right? Oh, yeah. So um, uh, close that for a second. Yeah, but, but you showed me how to do a speed port. Okay. okay. But I don't know how to play it. So, but like, do I have to, but like, I don't know how to do this part. So. 
So. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Like, yeah. we have to find out where it downloaded to or installed to, first of all. Okay, yeah, so. so I can show you how to get that. Okay. So um, go down to your toolbar. Um, click on the Windows. Then right click on Visual Studio Code. And go uh, do, 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 open file location. Open file location. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Now the thing is, this is a shortcut, so you got to right click it again. <coughs> go pro <coughs> properties, and uh, so that is where it is um, installed to. So you're gonna copy that. This. Mm -hmm. Control C. Yep. Control C. That. that and then back to Unity. This. <coughs> um, oh. So oh. go this. here, go oh, browse, okay, browse, and then, and uh, then um, plug it into the path up here. Oh, okay. so and you probably just have to erase that last little part where it says code.exe. Oh. No, okay, yeah. So I just need to. Yeah. Yeah. That? yeah hit and the enter. Wait, should it be a slash at the end? Or? No, it shouldn't need it. No. Oh, I think it just um, pasted in again. You probably have a quote at the beginning you need to get rid of as well. No. So erase that like you did before. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. And then go, nope, nope, too far. And then go right to the beginning, and you've probably got a quote at the very beginning you need to get rid of. Yeah. There we go. So then click on code, hit open, and wait for it. Boom, there you go. You're all set. No, I just need to go and edit the script. Yeah, there you go. Ah, oh, beautiful. Oh my gosh, this one. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah, I love it. So the only thing I've done is this line right here, where we're making a variable for our animator component. Here, let me uh, make this a little bigger. And I can close this to make a little more room. <coughs> Yeah, please do. Yeah. That helps. <laughs> so then in the start, I'm going to say anim equals get component. Animator. Just like that. So this basically gives us a reference to the animation controller. And we can use that to change the parameters like the Boolean. Brackets. The oh, the circles? Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah. So we put those there because technically this is a function call. It's an action word, right? For any action words where we're telling it to do something, we have to put the round brackets. Yeah. So once we've got that, it's pretty straightforward. In your update here, we're doing two things. We tell the zombie, look at the target. We tell him to go forward at whatever speed we've given him. So the only thing we have to do in here visually is say anim dot set bool, which is short for set boolean. And I called it walking, comma, true. So this is me saying like, yeah, transition to your walking animation.
Yeah, that looks pretty good. I can save it. And if I run it, he should start doing his shuffling. But there's, there's one more thing we might have to do. Uh, I put a space, but you don't have to. It's not mandatory. Okay, let me give this a try. Let's see how this goes. Do to do. Let me. I don't. Know. Hmm. Hmm. Not working yet. Let's see. There's no animator attached to the zombie game object. No animator. Okay, let me double check that. Oh, right. Um, yes. Okay, so here's the thing. We've got this animation inside of our zombie component here, right? So when we're trying to can reach out and get a reference to the animation controller, we, we have to actually tell it, look inside of the animation here. Otherwise, it's going to be looking up here in zombie. So here's how we're going to do it. <clears throat> First thing I'm going to do is right click in here. I'm going to rename it into something that makes sense, like Derek. Yeah, the one in blue, the animation there. Jane. Yeah, make it something shorter. <laughs> I've been calling my zombie Derek, so. <laughs> okay, I named my guy ugly face, the Jeff Pirate. I don't know if it's shorter. Well, you're going to have to type it in code, so. <laughs> oh, okay, well, then I might want to change it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So then right in here, we're not going to say get component on the parent. We got to go to the child, right? So we're going to do it like this. We're going to say anim equals, uh, let's see, game object dot find Derek or whatever you call it. Hold on, I'm just going to check my syntax on that one. Let me open up my note. I feel like I've got a typo in there. Oh, yeah, so it's not game object find, it's transform.find. Transform.find? Yeah. I totally lied to you, but then I told the truth. Which is even better. There we go. There we go. So I think that should work now. So I'm going to give that a save. Let's see how it goes. No, my game still doesn't make a lot of work. No. Let's find out. What? Oh. So it is working, but watch this. Or mine is it? Mine doesn't work at all. <laughs> uh, let's just, see here. Mine just has all compiler errors. Can, can no. Object reference not set. <laughs> to an instance of an object. Uh, let's see. Uh, 
enemy behavior. Derek. Did I spell Derek wrong? D E R R I C K. Yep, I spelled Derek wrong, believe it or not. Oh my god. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> well, we, well, well, mine doesn't work at all, so I'm just impressed. Okay, well, let's, let's figure out why. So let's make sure this one works first. Okay, so you see what's happening? It is working, but there's a delay. Here, let me run it again. So watch carefully, yeah, and, then we gotta get rid of the delay. and you'll see what, we've got to get rid of the delay. We want him to immediately go into, so what's happening is, he's finishing his idle animation before he oh, switches. I, I, I know, I remember we did this, but I might we did. it just doesn't work Okay, well let me fix that, and then let's take a look at it, because this is this will only take a second. So here's what we do, we click on the transition, and... Then we uncheck this tiny box here that says, has exit time. So we're gonna uncheck that. And then he should automatically go into his walking. There we go. Hey, um, so can you help me now, please? Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Does this run need to be checked or no? I don't know if it makes a difference Let's see. Does that need to be checked? You cannot use exclamation marks in a parameter. Oh. Yeah, that's a problem. Uh, yeah, so. Yeah, go ahead and delete that one. No, I'm just changing it. Yeah, that'll work. <laughs> well, I also used it in this. I don't care. I'm so then click on your arrow. Okay. And then it's run, run yeah. trip. Great. Right. Cool. Now I just need to so then in here. the X left me. And then control S. Then mm -hmm. SD. Bruh, it still doesn't work. Wait, what? Transition. Wait, no. Wait, but what? Oh, how does this not work? Ah. Oh my god. Unexpected symbol void. Ah, okay, there might be a typo. Double click that one. Let's see. Oh, you need a semicolon at oh. the end there. And I think that might be it. Uh, <coughs> Wait, did you save that? Yeah, it's like, it was, I did control X. Hmm. Yeah. No. Wait, let me see your code again. How many flaws were there when I got? Uh, true. Looks good. That uh, looks pretty good. Oh, right here? That should be a semicolon. Oh, yeah. Yeah. How did I not notice that? There we go. Oh, <coughs> now. <gasps> yes. Yes. Did he walk, though? Did he walk? So, you'll notice in your, in your controller there, I don't think he has a very long idle animation. So, I think we need to do that trick. I, I, I thought I already did that trick. Wait, wait, wait. So yeah. click on the arrow. Yeah. And... Oh, you unchecked it. Okay, run it again. Let's take a look. Hmm. Why? Hmm. Interesting. It's not, it just, it just doesn't go to that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's see. So that's called Jeff. That looks good. Run. Uh, run. What are they having in this thing? Did I do something wrong? Did I decide it's True. false? <laughs> no, that looks good. Okay, let me see your code again. I feel like it just 
This looks pretty good. Let's see. What was this? Let's, here, let me run this again. My guy just doesn't want to run again. I'm going to pause it. So the run is checked. So that is now true. It's just that when the run checked, he just doesn't do yeah. anything. Somehow he's not. I wonder if. Hmm. Looks pretty good. Um, let's see. Let me click on this. Enemy behavior is the one. Good player. Double check that the animator is on Jeff. Yeah. Which it is. Because there it is right there. <clears throat> Let's turn this on again. Let's check this. And see what he does. Huh. It's weird. Missing reference has been the object of type transfer. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's okay. Um, what's going on with this guy? Maybe, maybe something has to do with the transitions or something? I don't know. I wonder. What did I do? Uh, why? That's, 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 that's walking limit. That's, Okay, one of these is running. This one. Which one? The last one. Yeah. So right here? Yeah, the first one's idle, the second one's attack. So the, that's the animation. This one? Yeah. Yeah, it looks good. Okay, let's, uh, let's reassign it. So I'm going to get rid of this. Mm -hmm. Does let's that mean drag this one up in here. Something about that name is making me feel like something got unassigned here. So let's go here. Let's click here. And then reassign this condition. So run trip looks good. Okay, let's give this a try. Why? What is going on? Nothing crazy, like no spaces at the end of the name, nope. Is there anything that actually looks like it could be? Hmm. I mean, that doesn't matter, it just <laughs> makes it easier to look at. I wonder... I wonder if it doesn't like capitals. Okay. I mean, I wouldn't think so, but... <clears throat> I've just never used capitals, so I don't know for sure. Wait, why is this? Let me uncheck this. Remember you, you checked yeah. that just to see if it would work. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 it's so small. <laughs> Now you just need to change it. And then this one, right? And then run. So that's good. And then in the code. Mm. No. What, what, what have you done? It's kind of weird how it how it like how it highlights the whole thing. Yeah. Okay, give that a try. Uh, oof. I'm just gonna kill this guy. I forget how to shoot. Oh, yeah, okay. Mm. Yeah, there's been no chance he has to clear it out. 
Well, it's very strange. I, I don't know. I'm not sure what's going on. <coughs> That idol animation is strangely long. Like it takes forever, which is surprising. Like see how slow that is? Yeah. I feel like, okay, let's try something just to see what happens. We're gonna take the idol out for a second. And we're gonna right click this and make it the default. Mm -hmm. Default state. Let's just see if that forces him to start running. Yeah, okay. So the animation does work. Wait, but so here's that's one thing. okay. Here's one thing that's weird. <coughs> when, he gets, when he starts getting close to you, he just stops. Um, he might be actually inside of the collider at that yeah. point. Um, well, well, so that does go. work. Oh, you know what? We have to loop his run animation. Oh, that's yeah. why. So let's click on this. Let's click edit. Uh, somewhere down here. Loop time. If you like Doctor Who. There we go. I don't know Apply. Me. There we go. So let's try and bring that idle animation back okay. again now. Do you know which one it is? This is the first one. First one? I wonder. There's two, right? The idle, that one does nothing. It, it, look, but just this one does something, right? Yeah. Let's take See, a look. Man, it is so long. Why so long? That makes no sense to me. Mm. But the first one just does nothing, so. It just like stands there? Just look at it. Hmm. I know yeah. it does nothing because if you go to like this one, it it's pretty like, much looks like nothing, you're right. So okay, let's bring it in. We'll make it the default state. Then we'll make the transition again. Boom. Boom. And then we have to do all that editing. Yeah. Like this. Add the condition. Do running. Okay, true. Run true. There we go. Oh, what? You, you are bugging me. Uh, let's see. Let's get rid of your exit time. Oh, yeah. Rid of the exit time. You forgot to do let's that. Let's try that again. So I'm watching this checkbox. Oh. Hey! Yes! I don't know what we did, I don't know but we there we go. Worked, so. <laughs> nice. Okay. So if we've got a run in there, we can think about adding the attack now, right? Now, Thankfully, zombies are a fairly simple AI, right? If they get close enough, they attack. So all we really need is a distance equation to tell us how close they are to the player. Not hard. So first off, let me bring in my attacking state. Let's see here. Which one's attacking? Zombie attack. There we go. So I'm going to click on my animation first of all and I'm going to make it loop because if he gets close enough I want him to keep attacking right so I'm going to click edit click on the loop time and apply it <coughs> there we go so let me bring this state up into my controller okay so I think if I'm really thinking about this, zombie idle is never going to go to zombie attack, is it? Because zombie idle is him just like standing here like this. He's always going to start walking first and then attack. So my transition should be from walking to attack. Like that. I'm going to need another parameter. So I'll hit the plus. It'll also be a boolean. 
This one I'll call attacking. <clears throat> and then I'm going to make that a condition right here. I got to be careful because you see how it selected walking. But what I want is attacking. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. So that sets up the animation. Then I just need to know like how close is the zombie. And I got to set that Boolean when he gets close enough. So I'm going to go back to the code. <laughs> back to the code. And let's get the distance. <coughs> it's going to look like this. Float. I'm going to call it dist for distance. Equals. And thankfully, Unity has a built-in function for this. You're going to say vector3 dot distance. And then it basically takes like two positions and calculates the distance between them. So the first one is going to be the player. Now thankfully we do have a reference to the player. The player is the target. So we're going to say target dot position comma transform dot position which is us the zombie Oh, we're the zombie, all right. Oh. This is the enemy behavior. <laughs> well, the whole trick is just to make yourself stink like a zombie so they don't know that you're alive. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good trick, I think. Okay, so this gives us the distance. If we want to double check that, maybe we do a debug.log. And then we'll watch the output and we'll see when the zombie's getting close and we'll see what number we need. <clears throat> I'm guessing that like when he's less than two meters away, we want to trigger the attack. But let's try it. No, my you have to have faith, man. My debug log did not work. My debug log. Check the L. Is it a capital L? Haha. There we go. So it looks to me, yeah, like when he gets about two meters away, that's probably when I want to trigger my my attack. Oh no. Slowly floats towards them. He started it for a second there. Anyway. Interesting. Oh, it's not looping. That's why. Oh, okay. Yeah. So um, you're going to need to click on the animation. And then uh, yeah, uh, loop time. And then go down and hit apply. There you go. That should do it. <laughs> That looks pretty good. <laughs> yeah, I like it. Alright. 
telling me from way further too. It's, it tells me to, when it starts, and it's like seven. Yeah. Yeah, it'll just sit there I'm putting the debug like, log the whole time. Like, when he dies, it's just like missing reference exception. The object of type transform has been destroyed, but you are still trying to access it. Your script should either check if it is null or, or you should not destroy the object. Well, Unity is getting quite lippy at this point, don't you think? Yeah. It's trying to tell us what to do. And it's telling me <laughs> that exact message every second. Yeah. You're sending me like 10 of them every second. Yeah. No worries. We're going to take care of it. We're getting to it. But first of all, let's get the attack happening, right? <laughs> so here's what we're going to do. Right down here, I'm going to say if dist is less than 2, and it's going to be two steps here. First, first we have to tell him stop walking by making that false. Then we have to tell him start attacking. by setting that true. There we go. But what if the player is running away, right? So the scenario is like, yeah, we need like an else, right? So, exactly. So we can say else <laughs> there. So we're saying if, <coughs> if he's close, stop walking and attack. If he gets further away, stop attacking and, and walk. Let me give this a quick run just to see what, how it goes. <coughs> I'll be right back to that, but let's make sure it works. And so you see what happened there? Why did he attack so slowly? That is one possible answer. the exit time yeah. yeah we got to get rid of the exit time on his walking animation yeah. unity will do a pretty good job of blending the animations so that no matter what part of the animation it's in when he goes to attack it'll still look pretty good Can you go back to the coach? <laughs> yep attack boom attack. Pushing you while... pretty good eh? Okay. all right Back to the code. The problem of mine is that he like will physically run into me, kill me, and then he'll do. And then you do the so attack. I, yeah. So <laughs> you might have to give more health to the player or something. So like, can you time it so that it only does the damage once it does the swing. Like at the end of the animation. Because hmm. like if, if he like touches me and I manage to get away in theory before he hits me, it shouldn't do any damage. Right? What we'd have to do is put one of those events at the end of the animation that would call a function to do the damage. It's a little little trickier. We can circle back on that one. <clears throat> mm -hmm. 
Now once you've got that working, maybe try duplicate a couple of your zombies and make sure that that all still works. Duplicate them, move them around to different positions and just see if we've got a nice mobbing going on. <coughs> Oh, you've got an extra c closing curly brace oh, at your if. Yeah, click over that one, do that as save. No. no, end of the file. So you've still got a typo in there somewhere. Oh, I, I, so I, do, I think this is the problem. Uh, I don't think so. What it said? Unexpected symbol. Uh huh. Dunna. Let's see. You definitely need a closing because yeah. that's the class. Uh, I'm so confused. Okay, you are missing. Go back to your code. You are missing one curly brace. Oh. So go after that one and then put a curly brace. This? Yeah. Yeah, try that. No. Yeah. There we go. Doink. Whoa, he's attacking. Nice. Doink. Doink. I think he's yeah. too early. That actually looks good. Look at him. He's yeah. Like, he's like, he walks up to me, then, he's, then he just starts attacking this guy. I'll make it like uh, one point like eight. Yeah, <laughs> something like that. <clears throat> That's looking pretty good. Okay, so we've got animations going. We've got a game mechanic going. It's a good time for us to put in something called a game controller, right? So game controller's job is to coordinate everything. So when our zombie comes up and starts doing damage to the player and eventually the player dies, that's a significant event. We probably want to put messaging on the screen. We want to you know, reset scores, stuff like that. That's the job of a game controller. So it's a good time for us to make one. I have a question. Oh, my distance thing isn't working, I don't think. Because I, I need help. I need the helps. I need to be the help. So I've said, I've tried setting it to anything. I've even tried 0 0.5. This, but for some reason, it always, and I mean always, stays at two distance. He, he always has the same distance. It's so weird. Oh god, I hate those ones. He always has a, oh, these are just the, uh, how, oh. Mm, 1.4. Wait, like. 1.4. He attacks, like right as. Yeah. He attacks at two still. Yeah, interesting. Uh, so, and I've tried in the code, and I can't... Let's run it again. Let's try and pause it. Boom. What's the... So he's attacking at three. Even a, yeah, maybe even earlier. No. Let's double check what it's looking at Oh my god, here. stupid fucking bugs. They keep flying. They've been flying around my neck. I'm scared. I mean, it's my neck. What? <laughs> my legs. I'm very scared. I get that position. It's one position. If it is, it's less than one. Huh. Interesting. <coughs> According to this, dist is like still at three. So why is this guy? Let's double check this condition here. Attack, true. Oh, uh, has exit time, I forgot. Oh, uh, yeah, let's get rid of that. Even though it didn't, okay, wait, let's see if it works now, maybe. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> okay. Alright, let's get another try. Oh. Oh. Wait, is that it? Yeah, it's something still saved. For some reason, like, everything yeah. with the animation still 
that. Sometimes things do. That's oh, weird. But, oh, well. Okay, what's going on there? What? So he's automatically attacking. Yeah. He <coughs> Let's attacked. see. Let's double check the condition here. He attacked. A T T A C C. Let's mean. double check the spelling. <laughs> And yeah, I have smirks. Oh, wait a minute. You've got this exactly backwards. What? So, you're saying <laughs> if distance is less than one, uh, oh. stop running, but then you want to set the attack uh, trip. Oh, and like then. That. And then down here, no. otherwise, uh, one, I just two. want them to get. <laughs> Wow, I think that. Yeah, give that a try. That should do it. Well, now, <laughs> now since I said it's the one, it'll be very close by. Yeah, it should be. <laughs> He's gonna go like. <coughs> e e oh. <laughs> um, what? Hey, fly, get away from here! I hate you. Yeah, I'm gonna set it to stop. Fly, stop. Um, I don't think he. I think. I think he broke. I think it broke. I'm blaming it on the fly. But I think the game might be broken. Oh, okay. There you go. That's actually... Pretty good. That's pretty good. Yeah. Wait, that's pretty good range. Ah, oh, man. I am struggling. Um, okay, so, so back in Unity... We're gonna go right back into the hierarchy here. We're gonna make a new object. So if you right click in the hierarchy, you've got this option, create empty. So an empty is a game object that has no graphics. It's just there for the sake of code. So we're gonna go create empty and we're gonna rename it. Now the naming is important on this one, so we're going to say game controller. <laughs> Give me one second, guys. I'm going to see if I've got a Tylenol. Ooh, one left. Should just get me through it. I wrote game controller very well. Good. By well I meant horribly. So you're gonna create an empty and rename it game controller. And this guy's going to be kind of the brains of the whole thing. I named my game control. I, I just put capitals randomly. So kind of add a component. Make this sound unprofessional. New script. And we're also going to call this game controller. What? I feel like this game is going to destroy. There we go. That everybody's been working so hard. Um, well, you usually need to reference the script through the game object. Okay. So it's okay to name them the same. Okay. Yeah. Well, die. okay, so let's edit that game controller. We're going to give him a public function. Because he needs to know when the player dies. Because it's going to be his job to tell all the zombies to stop attacking once the player's dead. Because I said so. <laughs> because I'm Tim. Because my mom and dad. And I'm not answering any more questions on this line of reasoning. <laughs> Ask your own parents. <laughs> Okay, so let's go public. Let's call it, uh, so it's going to be public void on 
player death. So for now, let's put a debug log. Player died. Now do you guys remember which script knows when the player has died? Player health. Yeah. So let me bring up player health. Player health? Yeah. So right in here we've got this if health is less than zero. That basically means he's dead, right? So this guy is going to tell the game controller that the player just died. So first things first, he needs a reference to this game controller here. Wait, how do you do that? You can connect them? Yes, we can. Yeah, we're, we're going to get them talking to each other here. So this is in uh, player health right now, yeah. Uh, let me bring up my note real quick. Bringing up my note so we could take a look at it. So here's how we're going to do it. Game controller type game controller. This is in the health one? Yep. So we're in player health and we're going to make a private variable of type game controller and we're just going to call it game controller yeah so you can put it maybe right after your health variable there yeah you must yeah otherwise it won't be able to tell the difference between this and this yeah. <clears throat> this is getting pretty good, guys. So in a second, we'll have this game controller telling all the zombies to go back to their idle states after the guy's dead. It is cool because, like, you could also use it to maybe turn on, like, a wandering animation. So the player dies and then they all start kind of like shuffling off in different directions or something. Well, but, but it's not going to work yet. Not yet. Yeah. Right now we'll just get them going back to their, their idle state. I have a zombie that is dead. Okay, so then let's see here. So this is going to need a uh, start function. So we're going to say void start So the key here is going to be this little method called find with tag. Guys remember tagging, right? 
We used an enemy tag on the uh, on the zombie. We used a player tag on the player. We're gonna give the game controller a tag called just game controller, and that's how we're gonna find it. Yep. So so let's do it like this. Yeah. So, in this one, I've done it inside of the if health is less than zero. Oh, this little chunk right here. <clears throat> so here, let me let me grab this and put it in here. So, if health is less than zero. Man, I wish I had more, I wish I had a bigger screen. <clears throat> when you get this far, let me know so I can scroll over. Here, maybe I'll close this one for now. That's better. <clears throat> so we're basically saying, go find the game controller by its tag. Once you've got it, <coughs> get a reference to the script so that we can tell it to call that on player death function that we created. I think you can ignore that. Unless the error shows up in Unity itself, yeah. I wouldn't worry about it. Take your time, be careful with it. There's a lot of like references to game object in there, so careful with the capitals. Some have capitals, some don't. Yeah. 
the game object, it auto it auto corrected to a lowercase game object. Uh, don't let it auto correct you. <laughs> Sometimes the auto correct is not smart. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. So this one right here, this lowercase game object, that's referring to the player, right? This uppercase game object, that's referring basically to the whole game. So it's saying anywhere in the game, find this game controller. It's pretty much saying anywhere in the game is a game object. So the game is a game object. Yeah, it is, yeah, yeah. The more you know. Yeah. I finished. All compilers need to be fixed. Yeah, all right. Let's Let's take a look. Let's make sure curly braces are all cool. Oh, that's interesting. Wait, Visual Studio doesn't give us highlighting of closing braces? Oh, fail! Let's see. Pretty good. I mean, there is one more thing we have to do in Unity. I don't think it's what's causing the problem, but we have to actually add the tag. So right up here, we'll go game control. Oh, typo. Game... Is that a typo? Nope, game controller. That looks okay. Didn't say it's global. Already can change it definitely. Do we have more than one? Oh! You've got a game controller in here already. I think. Uh, let's open it. Because there's three errors. There's nothing in it. This is indeed strange. Yeah, let's close it here. Uh, you want to type? <laughs> you want to type game controller? <laughs> oh, uh, capital C on that. Yeah, click to create an ad. What? Where? Where is it? Oh, okay. Keep it. <laughs> Uh, click on your game controller. Yeah, drag it on there. There we go. I think that's what it was. I think we had two game yep. controllers in there. Yeah, nice. That makes more sense.
So when the guy gets close and kills you, we should see a debug log saying that uh, the game controller basically knows that you're dead. We should probably clear up some of our debug logs. Player dead. That was all this stuff. So basically, um, this is what we're working to <laughs> towards fixing. Because okay. you can see he keeps attacking, even though you're dead. So we basically have to turn him off. Okay. Otherwise, he's trying to damage an object that it doesn't exist, exist anymore. Sorry, I have a friend from the other Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So I'm going to complete this little chunk here, guys, because uh, I feel like I'm fading <laughs> and uh, I don't want to leave this not finished. So let me hammer through this little bit. It's not a lot. And then basically it'll be able to deactivate all your zombies once a player is dead. Because all these errors we're seeing are happening because... The zombie is still on attack mode, right? And he's attacking something, but it, that thing doesn't exist anymore. So it, it causes an error. So we got to turn him off. It, that is precisely it. Or his half-life. <laughs> his, his undead life. Whatever we call it. <laughs> okay, so let's... Um, Let's bring up our enemy behavior script again. And we're just going to give him a boolean that will indicate whether he should be animating or not. So I'm going to say <laughs> private bool and I'll just call him call it active equals true. So by default, he is active. Yeah, private bool active equals trip. So what we're setting up is that if you set it to false, he stops attacking, he stops moving forward, he basically just goes idle again yeah so in here yeah that's correct yeah we're gonna set that up now that's a good point so in your update we're basically gonna take everything in the update and put it in an if statement all right, be careful with this. So Make sure. Everything. Oh my God, everything. We're going to put this this whole chunk inside an if. So it's going to look like this. If active. And then you got to make sure you get your closing curly brace right in the right spot here. So when he only does all this stuff if he's active. Yeah, be careful with it. So basically, it's right after the else one. Yeah. Nice. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to make a 
public void let's call it uh, deactivate So this is us saying, you know, once you're inactive, don't attack, don't walk. <laughs> so what the game controller is going to do, it's going to have a little loop that will go through all the enemies that are on this, on, in the game right now and call deactivate on all of them. Oh, so do I actually. Comma. I think you want that to be inside that closing curling race there. Yeah, right there. Yeah. Excuse me. Oh, mama. Ah. Cool. Not quite yet. We still have to do the thing in the game controller. So let me bring up my game controller again. Here we go. So right here where we're saying player dead, we basically want to tell all the zombies to deactivate. Definitely a curly brace issue somewhere. Uh, public color deactivate. Looks good, looks good. <sighs> Sorry, I'm getting a serious headache right now. Uh, I think I'll hold off for. A few more minutes, because yeah, sure. I already took Tylenol. Uh, I'm not sure that I should mix them. Oh, you know what? Uh, add another curly brace in. Where? Right after that guy. Like a closing one. Okay. Yeah. I think it's the if statement. Yeah, that's it. Now it just is one error. Or that is. I'm narrowing it down. Transform is going to destroy. Oh, that's fine. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. Let's try it in uh, 
uh, Unity. Picture console. Let's see what it says. That's that's fine. That's what we expect to see. Yeah. Good, good, good. Yeah, with our next step, we should see those errors go away. <coughs> All right. Um, so let me bring up my note real quick here so we can take a look at the syntax. So we're looking for our little loop right here. So it's actually pretty small. We say zombies equals game object, find game objects with tag enemy. Then we create a little special loop here called a for each loop. So the for each loop says, go through all the zombies that you find and with each one, call a function on it. Nope, this is in your game controller. Yeah, so let me pull this off to the side here. We'll just kind of take it. So game controller. Stick with me, brother. So right here where you've got this debug log in your on player dev, this is where we're going to create this little function here. Yeah. So this is the point where we know that the guy is dead. So two things. First off, we got to make a variable called zombies, which is uh, what we call an array of game objects. You see these little square brackets here? That stands for an array. An array is a list. This is us saying like, I may have more than one zombie on the screen. So I'm going to go right here. I'm going to say public game object array. No. And I'll call it zombies. So we added this one line. Wait, wait, which one is that on? Is that on player health? Nope. Game controller. Still? Yeah. Yeah. We're pretty much done with player health. We don't have to touch it. Oh my god. I just wrote the thing that was in player, player health. Is, oh my god. Uh. No. Don't be a player health. Uh, I ruined everything too. I just ruined my game. <laughs> 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 Guess we're pushing out the release date. Yeah. yeah. Not gonna make the holidays. 2017. I mean, <laughs> no, <not 20> <laughs> that would be pretty good. <laughs> it's really actually already released, nice. guys. Like <laughs> it's been out for a year. <laughs> right. Let me write this little loop here. Here's what it's gonna look like. Zombies equals game object dot find game objects with tag you just gotta let me finish this dude I'm fading fast enemy no worries no worries you're not far behind because you got like three lines of code to write and then you're all good Then it's going to be. Yeah, whatever the tag was. That works. Yeah, it's the tag that you want? Yeah.
So this is me saying, okay, zombie, let me talk to your enemy behavior script, just like this, and then I'm going to call a method on it. So what's my method? It's called deactivate. So I'm going to say deactivate. And that's what the whole thing looks like. It's less than 25 lines of code. I'm so confused. I think I just mixed up everything. I am just actually confused. So confused. Are you in your game controller? Uh, yes, I was in it, but I didn't get I nearly got anything. And for the player health, I haven't finished anything. Ah, I fell really far behind. Now I don't know what to do. I don't have any, like, I barely... Okay, let me bring that one up again. <laughs> let me bring up player health. So there's player health. <laughs> Just got to be careful with the syntax, but... They're almost there. I'll be right back. Check, check, check. Okay, I'm back. All right, you get it sorted out? Well, not, I'm not done writing. Okay, that's all right. Take your time. Uh, let me test it one time, and then I bring the code right back. Let me just make sure that I'm all right here. So I expect him to walk forward, attack me, kill me, and then kind of deactivate himself. He attacks and kills me, and now, hey, what's going on? Oh, you you know what it is? Because just like you were saying, there's no exit transition here. Wow. He doesn't even go yeah. To the... So I want to send him back to idle, right? Yeah. There's no way that he can do it. It's, it's, there's no transition back. Exactly. It's physically impossible. So let's do this, physics, and I, this I one should be. Attacking falls and walking falls. Boop. Yeah. There we go. Uh, actually, you're right. We should get rid of that. There we go. Let's try that again. I think it should work. Uh. And then, uh, maybe I didn't save one of my files. Hold on now. He's into me. 
And that's good. Enemy behavior. Deactivate. No, eh? Let me put a little debug log in here. Let's see what's up. Probably missed some little thing. Not yet. Hmm. Okay. Let's see. I'm going to also keep an eye on these checkboxes in here because they should get unchecked once my player dies. Attacking. Ah, oh, they're not getting unchecked. See that? So maybe something is up with my loop. See if I can find it. Oh, I know what it is. My game controller needs a tag. Game controller. You have it. Yeah. I did not. But it's still not working. Okay. So let's see if mine works now. Hopefully. Yeah, so that's that's working. So let's figure out why yours not. Yeah, definitely. Um, which one do, do you need? Game controller. Game control. There you go. If you need to scroll it, feel free. Right, let's see what you got. Am I missing code? Um, do you see the player died? Okay, cool. Zombies equals game launcher. Game launcher zombies. Take enemy. Each. Game launcher. This looks pretty good. Okay. You want to run it one time? <clears throat> we'll keep an eye on those check boxes to see what they do. Okay, walking. So far, so good. Attacking. Boom. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, let's figure it out. Oh, right. Sorry. I keep doing that. <laughs> All right, so let's see. So the game controller, let's check if it's got the tag. It does. Great. Let's take a look at the player health. Check that that on um, player death is working. <coughs> on um, player death. Did we see player died in the console? Uh, last time we did. We did, eh? So then it's just something in the loop. Um, do, 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 do. Uh, 
That looks pretty good to me. Don't do pause. Oh, the walking. The attack is still turned on. Oh, okay. I think I know what it is. Yeah. Uh, let's take a look at. The scripts are already open over here. Ah, this one. Okay. Uh, enemy behavior. Huh. No? I thought it might be that, but... There's still, there's one error on the script, though, so that might be hmm. something. Well, it's like a runtime error, though. Deactivate. Activate equals false. Set pool. Set pool. throw a debug log in there sure. so we can make sure that's actually getting called. Yeah, let's say um, enemy deactivating. How are you doing there, Ben? Uh, uh, I did a lot of problems. Yeah, you got some error? Yeah, I'll be right over. So we should see that enemy deactivating up here one time. Yeah. No. Oh, we're not. So it's not actually calling that. Yeah. Did I write that wrong? Or? Let's see. So uh, let's double check the tag. So this one, <coughs> zombie, is the tag. Uh, so let's double check our loo to see are we finding the right tag. Ah, that should be zombie. The tag's on the Are, Is it? Let's take a look at that tag again. Oh, you're right. Oh, sorry, man. Anyway, yeah, yeah, you're right. Um, let's see. Okay. Um, go back to Unity again for a second. And then it's... Enemy... Oh. I wonder if yours is, needs that underscore in enemy behavior. Oh, you've got it. Uh, let me let me hear it. Because somehow this is not happening. That deactivate call is, is not um, happening. Is this anything? <laughs> um. Yeah, actually. That's. I wonder how this was working. Because that should be player. our player. Oh, which it is, yeah. But then we kill the player, so the oh, player so gets destroyed. Missing, yeah. yeah. That makes sense. That's okay. Um, let's put one more debug in. Let's see how many zombies it recognizes here. There's just one, so... Yeah, let's confirm that. Um, let's go debug log. Um, <coughs> zombies dot length uh, without quotes. 
by length. If I make it a lowercase z, because we're going to look at that variable there. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure if C sharp needs round brackets, but let's find out. It says there's no errors, so. Interesting. I don't know what changed. It says, it says he's on idle now. So. Wow, look at that. Enemy deactivated. How is it suddenly working? What do we do? Do we just maybe not have a file saved? Is that possible? That could have been it, yeah. It's easy fix. Maybe that could be it. <laughs> the pace is nice on his walk, eh? Yeah. It looks really real. Oh, it perfect. Just, yeah. Okay, that's good. That is good. I'm going to turn that back on so you actually see him finish the attack first. Mm, yeah. Otherwise it's kind of boring. True. This is hand and it goes back to doing nothing, right? So. Yeah, true. <laughs> All right. Looking pretty good. Looking pretty good. All right. You can take a look over here. Now, if you want, you could try duplicating your zombie. Add a couple more and see if it all still works, which it should. Pretty much all of them are on this one thing. Okay. It doesn't like my public void. Oh, okay. It hates it. Oh, you know what? That's usually... Okay, I, think, I think I put the wrong opposing thing. Oh, yeah, that should be opening. That could be it. And get rid of that extra little closey it gave you. Yeah. But then where does this one go? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there you go. And then the, the now, um, that, that doesn't fix anything. <laughs> like, All right, it's probably a curly brace problem. So let's yeah, double click I, this I'm one. I'm pretty sure it is. I think I put my pogo void under okay. my bad Okay, if you don't mind, I am going to clean up your tabbing a little bit okay. here because it'll make it a little easier to look at. So move that over. We'll double check that this has a closing, which it does, so that's good. You can actually tab two over at one time. Just like that. <laughs> oh my god, you tabbed it over. And then we'll tab it right there. And we'll make sure that this else is closed. Looks good. Tab these guys over. Just like that. Tab this guy over so that he's underneath of this one. Okay, now what are you closing? Nothing. <laughs> yeah, you know what? We are missing a closing for this oh, one. Oh, yeah, actually, no, that one. The, wait, wait, look. That one is closing, that one. Exactly. Oh. Which means that this one is not closed. Yeah. So let's put a curly brace on that. Yep, give that, yep, give that a save. Better, better. So double click that one. And play your health. Okay, what happened is I, got, I kind of got mixed up a bunch of put player control. This one is confusing. Yeah, there's a lot going on in this one. I, I picked like player, the player controller scripts and the player health scripts and stuff like that. Oh, okay. Oh, no, this helps. looks okay. This is in player help? Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Oh, I think I just have an extra one. Yeah, it might be. Might be. Is that an extra one? Or wait, Let's do the same thing. Let's clean up our tabbing. It just makes it a little easier to look at. Here's our if statement. Oh, this is missing an opening curly brace, right? Oh, that makes. Oh, okay, that's good. Maybe that one. No. Oh, I don't think I saved it. No, I think it's right. I saved it. Oh. T control S. Oops. Okay. Cabbage. That's not important though, that's just this mm, Yeah, that's okay. 
Yeah, it's not working now. Did it work when you duplicated the zombies? Did it work when you did the game? I had like three or four and they were they all came and then they'd still die. They did they all went idle after so. Perfect. Perfect. Hey, right, catch you later. There's a problem with the game controller. The simple game controller, but they were expecting a class, a delegate, an enum, an interface, a partial or struct. Wow. Okay. That is Unity saying, I don't know what's wrong. <laughs> but it looks to me like that's not saved. <laughs> <coughs> oh, no, still. Oh, crap. Crap. Oh, man. Now there's more things. <laughs> I'm struggling a bit tonight. I'm You're struggling? fighting a cold and oh, no. it's kicking my butt. What is going on here? <laughs> I don't know. There's still problems. Do you want me to take a look at it? Yeah, I just like We take a quick look at it. Yeah. Let me take a quick look at it. Okay, right. listen. I'm taking the wheel. Oh, wait, you see. can take the wheel, the wheelie. I'm checking this. See, I'm not seeing a closing okay. on that, so that could be it. That one's closed. That one's closed. This one's closed. It's just a, this one's closed. Just I think you're just missing a closing. Okay. Control. Let's try that. Mm. That one's still... Wait, if we go back from there... Okay, now we just need that one that it doesn't... No, we still have to have one. We still have that one. The, the really annoying well, one. we're gonna find it. He's had something to do with game controller, I think. Why is this... Why is this bringing this up? Game controller. Okay. This one's tricky because it's saying that this is an error. But it's probably because this one has an error. You know what I mean? Oh. Right here, it's saying like, yeah. look for a game controller. But then in this, if there's an error in this one, that would cause this to have a problem. So let's double check this one. Yeah. But there's no zombies. Zombies. Am I missing like a pub? Like objects with tag. I'm that looks something. good. Am I missing like a, like a class or something? Looks. Pretty good. Zombie, okay, component, and the behavior to activate looks good. That's the end of the loop. This one, that's the end of the on player death. And this is the end of the class. Looks. Yeah, the mono behavior. This all looks pretty good to me. Let's give that a save. Let me double check one more thing here. This guy needs a tag. Oh. So it could be that. Game controller. That's right what it is. Oh. As no, it's player good. health, unexpected Expect symbol. Maybe Game just, controller. Maybe. Oh. What's going on? Oh, wait. Go back. Okay. Go back to the code. Uh, no, no, that is okay. Let me double check something on your player health here. Okay, right, game controller. Now type game controller. That looks pretty good. What is going on here? What are we missing? Let's double check. That's game controller. That looks okay. Double check that this is actually the right one. It yeah, looks good. I don't see a problem with that. We're super close with it. 
just some little thing that I'm missing here. It is somehow not liking this, but... That's all that. Uh, let me do something here. I'm going to put a debug log in the, in the start. Just to make sure that it's actually getting into the game. this stuff just temporarily <laughs> yeah. Whoa. stop being helpful code editor you turned everything into that yeah <laughs> oh my god everything's green now does that just make everything so this make turns all this into a comment what? so that it won't compile okay. so it ignores that and I'm doing Wait, that. Save? Yeah, I think I did. Me too. Sure. Yeah. I, I thought you did. Get out of here. <laughs> there we go. Is that the problem? Nope. That has, that has nothing so to there's do. something wrong with your game controller. <clears throat> something with the game controller. So just make that a stopping comments. Yeah. Uh, no, don't. Yeah, it's about to be Game object. Yeah, there's there's something I'm missing in here. There's something I'm not seeing. I'm gonna try unattaching it and attach it again. <laughs> I mean, I believe it's a pro. <coughs> I believe it's a problem in the game controller because when it hits yeah. this part right here, it's saying like, "I don't know what this is," and it can't get past it. Wait! Oh my God, dude, this is in the wrong place. You just got to move it. That's what it is. Oh, this is in the wrong place too. Oh my gosh, let's get rid of Wait, that. You got rid of the point start. Yep. Boom. Put that right down there. What, what about this void start? We've already got one. Uh, bum, bum, why bum. was there two? I don't know. <laughs> that was very strange. Just trying to be extra safe, maybe? Wait. Okay, so you've got other issues in there, but Wait, that finds that problem. Oh, so I'll just yeah, you're going to have to work on that code a little bit, but... That's definitely what the problem was there. And I feel like we're keeping your mom here too late. <laughs> yeah. 
we can uh, we can get that running in the first five minutes next week. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. So that's some pretty good progress this week. Yeah, we got it. Yeah. Do you think we should put some dramatic lighting in next week? Sure. That'd be cool, right? Well, that's not going to take that long time. No, it's pretty easy. Okay, signing off.